Come and bienvenue, welcome to a huge night of tussles at Glory Super Fight Series Brussels. The European capital throws its gates open to some of the toughest warriors on the planet. In a massive headline fight, Thai lightweight champion Sidichai takes on French contender tournament winner Dylan Salvador. The killer kid Sidichai may look harmless, but put him in the ring and he is deadly. With Ruben Van Roosmalen fighting at featherweight, can anyone challenge the Thai superstar? And a clash of the titans as heavyweight monsters, Hesty Gerges and Chai Lewis Perry bring nearly 500 pounds of punching power to the ring. Chopper Chai has scored four knockouts in five fights, but Egyptian Gerges has fought and won against the cream of the crop and is looking to reassert himself in the heavyweight division. Armenian machine Haruk Gregorian faces Pavel Garaj in a blistering welterweight bout. Plus, the lightweights let loose as Anton Petrov comes under fire from Marat Gregorian. It's glory. Super Fight Series Brussels. The world's premier kickboxing league rolls into the capital city of the European Union tonight for Glory 39 Super Fight Series at the Bors National Arena. Tijani Bestadi was the youngest male fighter in Glory history when he debuted in December with a victory. Tonight he's back, facing Belgium's own Sabri Benhinia in a battle of young talents. Do or die, that's the mindset Haruk Gregorian brings to the ring, and that's what's made him a fan favorite. Slovakia's Pavel Garaj shares the same outlook. So expect fireworks when these two welterweights collide. Glory welcomes their first ever Chinese fighter to the organization. As tonight, lightweight King Hao Moon makes his debut against Belgium-based fellow debutante Killian Mouloun. Veteran heavyweight Hesty Gerges is one of the most accomplished fighters in the division. But rising star Chai Lewis Perry is looking to steal his shine and take a big scalp tonight. Gerges says it's not possible that he'll lose this fight. We'll wait and see what Chopper Chai has in store. And from the heavyweights back to the lightweights with top contender Marat Gregorian looking to stay on the title trail as he faces Bulgaria's Anton Petrov in the co-main event. And then world lightweight champion Sinichai defends his title for the second time in our main event. He faces Dylan Salvador. They fought twice before with each winning once, but never has so much been on the line. We are live inside the Forst Arena here in Brussels, Belgium. Haven't been here in five years, but Glory returns and a great fight card tonight. Wearing the black microphone flag, my name is Todd Grisham. In the white, he is the former Glory welterweight champion of the world, Joseph Valtellini. And let's start right at the top, our main event, the lightweight championship of the world on the line. You're going to expect a very technical fight between these two very experienced Muay Thai fighters. So expect a lot of good technique, both Southpaws. It is Sidichai versus Salvador. And Sidichai Sit Song Pinong is a Muay Thai fighter, but has become so much more than that. Yeah, he was not only a Muay Thai fighter, he was he owns the largest Muay Thai title at Limpini Stadium, and he's a kickboxing world champion, so he owns titles in both leagues. This is his second world title defense. The first came back at Oberhausen, Germany in December. He took on Marat Gregorian. It was a close fight, a lot of good exchanges, but Sidichai in that left kick constant pressure and closing that distance really landing some good shots was the big difference. Rod Gregorian who you'll also see here later tonight can beat everybody it seems except for Sidichai. What makes him so special? Well Sidichai is so experienced and he's been fighting from such a young age that he really knows how to use that southpaw really well but that's not the advantage he's going to have today as Salvador is also a southpaw. That's right, Dylan Salvador out of France. It'll be southpaw versus southpaw. And Salvador also very accomplished in Muay Thai. Well, they're one and one. And Salvador has fought some of the best Muay Thai fighters in the world. And this makes him very confident and not scared of Sidichai's experience. Salvador fought the same night as Sidichai did back in December. But he had to fight twice in order to earn this opportunity. Yeah, he had a contender's tournament. He started off 
um, beating Moiseev, a very experienced opponent. And here's his highlights against Bakiri, where he showed he's more than just a Muay Thai fighter. He showcased good boxing and slick movement. He's hard to hit, that's for sure. Sidichai will have his hands full against a man he's already lost to once tonight is the rubber match. A great card from top to bottom as we look at it now. A couple of fights to highlight. You'll see Harut and Murat Gregorian. They're not brothers, but they are very close. They're tra training partners, in fact. Ching Hao Ming from China, the first ever Chinese fighter Glory has ever signed. He debuts tonight. And how about that heavyweight bout? Gurgis versus Chopper Chai. Yeah, it's that veteran Gurgis against the up-and-coming Chai Lewis. And it's about power versus movement. And for Chopper Chai, it's all about his mouth. He loves to talk and say entertaining things. Hopefully he doesn't let us down right now. He's standing by backstage with a third member of our broadcast crew, Whitney Miller. Chai, you seem very calm, cool, and collected back here, even though you're taking on a kickboxing veteran and are an underdog. How does that sit with you tonight? Uh, I'm always calm. I, I literally am always calm. I think it's just my demeanor. Um, my attitude in life is always is quite relaxed. Um, you know, it's just handling the stresses of, of everyday life is, it makes this easy. And uh, where Hesdi is a veteran and he has my respect, um, he's also going to get another thing from me, and that's my power. Speaking of respect, he said that not only is he going to beat you, but that you don't even belong in the same ring as him. What do you think about that? Well, he doesn't belong in the same ring as me because he looks like Humpty Dumpty and I look like a Baywatch model. So really it's, it's, it's all about relevance and uh, what he has to say has zero relevance for me. Well, it will no doubt be fireworks. Good luck tonight. Let's get it started. Sending it out to Tim Hughes. Glory Sports International, the world's premier kickboxing organization, returns to the vibrant heart of Europe, Brussels, Belgium, for the Glory Superfight Series. Tonight, featuring athletes from 11 countries on three continents, and a five-round battle for the lightweight championship of the world. All of our bouts tonight sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association in cooperation with the BKBMO. Boris National Arena, Brussels, Belgium. Are you ready for glory? We begin in the lightweight division and about scheduled for three three-minute rounds. First to make his way to the glory ring. Among his career highlights is an eight-man European tournament championship. Here is Sabri Benhenia. Here is the Tunisian Sabri Benhenia making his glory debut. Joe, thinking back to the first time you made the walk, so to speak, what's going through his mind right now? Well, he knows this is a huge opportunity, and he knows Bestati is one of those guys that the organization is looking at promoting. So a big win for him tonight will really catapult him in the glory ring. He's tall for this division, but not quite as tall as his opponent, Bestati, which will be a bit strange for him. Well, he does like fighting on the outside, using his reach, keeping his fighters at distance, but that's going to be harder because he is the shorter fighter, so we're going to have to see him use a little bit more of that pressure fighting. This man coming off a unanimous decision win over Andre Brühl at Glory 36 in Germany. Here is Tejani Bestati. You're looking at the youngest ever fighter signed by Glory, made his debut at the young age of 19. He turned professional at 17, Joe. Yeah, he's the uh, youngest to be signed to Glory, as well as one of the tallest in the division, and that's going to be his main advantage. And he's working with Coliseum Gym, with Danny DeVries, and they're really working on 
keeping him long and allowing him to set up his big weapons, which is his flying switch knee. Now we saw him in his debut a few months ago. He looked fantastic, but did get rattled late in that third round. With 30 seconds left, Brule was able to catch him with an overhand, but that's kind of a good learning experience, saying he has to stay technical, he's got to stay defensive for the whole three rounds. He did beat Andre Brule at Glory 36 Germany, looking for his third win and third fight, three fights here with Glory. Here's our tale of the tape, and for this division in the lightweights, 154 pounds, you don't see too many guys over six feet tall, but we've got two of them tonight, and it will be Bestati with the edge and right with weight, reach, and height. Well, Sabri feels his advantage is in that age, and his younger brother also fights who's 19, the same age as Batati, so he feels his age is an advantage, but it's Bestati that has a little bit more fight experience and that glory ring experience being 2-0. Here are the glory rules. Only three rounds to get it done. Three minutes each. Punches, kicks, and knees are the legal strikes. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight, and it is over. Let's take a look at the glory scoring system. Five judges tonight will score the bout using the 10-point must system. Scoring is based on knockdowns, damage, clean scoring strikes with an emphasis on spectacular techniques. If there's no advantage, we're looking at aggressiveness. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our first super fight of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, this two-time European champion brings a young professional record of five victories versus two defeats and one bout scored even. He'll make his Glory debut tonight. Standing six feet one inch tall, 1.86 meters, he went in at fight time at an even 151 pounds, 68.5 kilos. Fighting out of Tunisia, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Sabri Benhenia. Here now is his opponent standing on my left and fighting out of the white corner, the youngest on the glory roster at the age of 19. His professional career impressive, 11 wins with just one loss. Four of those wins by knockout, he is undefeated in two prior glory appearances. Standing six feet three inches tall, 1.90 meters, he weighed in at 152 pounds and even 69 kilos. Fighting out of Morocco by way of Utrecht, the Netherlands, please welcome Tajani Bastani. And your referee in charge of this bout is Paul Nichols. Okay, gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting too. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you want. Break. Break. Sibri Benhenia told us yesterday that he doesn't right. fight angry. He's so calm judge, and relaxed. Judge, judge, he looks as angry as anybody I've seen about fight. the fight. So here we go. Youth and experience versus youth and experience, Joe. Both very tall, very lean. Let's see who's going to have the advantage fighting at the distance. He asked Hania what his strategy was. He said, look, I saw Bestani fade in the third round. We're going to try and drag it out and get him in. But that does not appear to be the game plan thus far. No, he's bringing it in right away. But good job of Bestani using his boxing in mid-range there. Straight away, both fighters teeing off. That's the way we like it. Just nine total minutes of fighting to win. You can't waste time here in glory. And there's a head kick from Bestati, and now going with the left. Bestati's doing a good job at using a lot of combinations. He's surprised at how aggressive Henya's been. Well, Henya feels that Bestati has the reach and height advantage, which he does, so he's using more of a pressure-style approach. The jab landing there for Henya, trying to follow it up with a right that was slipped by Bestati. There's Bestati trying to set up his famous weapon, which is that switch knee to the head. These two guys fighting like there is no round two. Oh, and a right hand stuns Henya. Bestati's having the advantage in the this exchanges. This was not Henya's game plan, and it may be backfiring here. Yeah, he needs to move out. He needs to circle. Get out of that pocket. 
and he is making his debut. A lot of pressure. Sometimes fighters change when the bright lights are on them. The best time, he just keeps getting the best in the exchanges, and he's hitting and just slipping outside of range. Enya continues to walk forward. But there is blood coming out of the mouth of Vestati, it appears. Maybe the nose as well. Both guys relying heavily on their boxing. Now they're starting to mix in a little bit more kicks. And Henya already looks spit, at least cardiovascular-wise. Both men with a ton of output in this round one. I liked earlier when Bestati was mixing levels with his punches. That'll help him open up the head a little bit if he hits the body before he goes to the head. There's just no zip on Hania's punches, but Bestati has plenty of gas left in the tank. Hania's backed against the ropes. The ben, bell can't come soon enough. Ben Hania's rocked right now. Nice reach. But well, Bestati swept the leg there. Not allowed to do that in the glory rules. A fantastic opening round here on our Glory Super Fight Series. What a way to start on UFC Fight Pass. Looking at some of the highlights, it was the early pressure of Henya decided that he was going to pressure fight here. But it was Bestati getting the best and the better in the exchanges, landing some good right hands. And then there's that switch knee that Bestati likes to throw in. There's a lot of good highlight knockouts with that switch knee. But it was the boxing in this round for Bestati that gave him the biggest advantage. And there was that right hand he landed a few times. But Ben Henya does have an experienced Fine. corner. He has Murat Derechi, one of the Fine. most experienced kickboxers from Europe, who I had the opportunity to fight at Glory 6 Istanbul. Henya got into kickboxing at the age of 16 when he saw a Badr Hari fight on TV. That first round was a Badr Hari-like performance. Just come out and let the guns blaze. So Vestati's starting with the low kick, so his corner was probably telling him to mix in the low kick after his punches. On oh, to the ear, maybe the back of the head. It is sort of knocked down by our referee, Paul Nichols. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Gloves up. And here comes Vestati going for the kill here. It's that right hand by Vestati that's doing the most damage. Break, break. Fight. Vestati looking for his fifth career knockout. Oh, and he may get it. Henya in real trouble now. Head down. Perfect spot for those knees. That's when Vestati needs to mix in other strikes. Ben Henya needs to get out of there, start using his movement more. Ben Henya showing a ton of heart. He doesn't have his legs, it's wobbling underneath him. And no foundation for the punches either. But he still keeps coming forward. Oh, eats a right and another one as Bestati is just teeing off. A left hand and down goes Enya for the second time. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, gloves up, good, fight. So here we go, another knockdown, and this fight is over. Three in a round, and it's done. Bestati going to go out on his shield, or at least Henya will, as Bestati tries to finish. There's no power left in Ben Henya. He can't even stand anymore. Fight. What a hopeless feeling. And Paul Nichols has got to be keeping a close eye now on Henya. And that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. A TKO for Tejani Bestani. He showed a lot more aggression, landing a lot of those good right hands. Well done by the young, talented Bestani. Not much more as head coach Danny DeBrice could have asked for. He had weathered the storm from Ben Henya early wore him down and put him away.
Yeah, once he found that right hand, there wasn't much left for Ben Henya. But early in that second round, it was Bestati trying to use his low kicks, but his punches were just doing too much damage. So Tajani Bestati improves to 12 and 1 with now five knockouts, and he's also unbeaten in Glory. We'll make it official when Glory Super Fight Series returns. GloryShop.com has the ladies in glory gear, hats, shirts, sweatshirts, and sweats. It's time for glory. Available now at GloryShop.com. Make sure you use the code WELCOME10 and you'll get 10% off now at GloryShop.com. Now, a closer look at glory's rules. Glory kickboxing is the most action-packed fight sport on the planet. Legal strikes are punches, kicks, and knees. Regular bouts are three rounds. Championship bouts are five, and each round is three minutes of action. Outfight your opponent for 10-9. Knock them down for 10-8. In a normal bout or tournament final, three knockdowns in one round or four in the entire bout, and the fight is over by TKO. In a tournament semi, two knockdowns in one round or three in the entire bout, and it's all over. Or... You can just knock your opponent out. Sweeps, elbows, and grappling are not allowed. Clinching is okay if you follow up with a knee. Glory rules are designed to bring non-stop, fast-paced stand-up action. To find out more, go to glorykickboxing.com. Welcome back here to Brussels. We'll jump right into our highlights from our opening bout. And Tajani Bestati certainly has plenty to choose from. Yeah, he just went out and really wanted to utilize his boxing. He found success with it really early on, and he just stuck with it. And it was that right hand that he just kept landing. But Ben Henya showed a lot of heart by constantly coming forward, even though he was knocked down twice in the round. But Bestati just kept going off and teeing off to the head. And finally kept scoring his last knockdown, which gave him the TKO victory. Danny DeBrice, his trainer, told us that Bestati has been sparring with Ruben Van Roosmalen and has been holding his own. You tend to believe him after seeing that performance, do you not? From that team, he even spars with the Wilness brothers, he spars with Van Roosmalen, so he has a lot of good experience and it showed tonight. But at the end of the day, it was those punches of Bestati that won him this fight. Strikes absorbed, 83 shots to the head for Benhenya. That never is a good thing. Tim Hughes now with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes in two minutes and five seconds of that second round when your referee Paul Nichols steps in to wave this one off for your winner by technical knockout, Tijani Bestani. So, Joe, if you're the matchmaker, where do you send Bestati from here? Do you inch him along, or do you say, hey, man, he's he's going to have to be facing some big names? Well, if it were up to me, I would say give him a few more fights. Let's gradually build him because he's so young, so talented. It would be a shame to see him go up the rankings too quickly. And he's so good. Just 19 years old, now 3-0 and in glory with a knockout win tonight here over a very game, Sabri Ben Henya. Coming up later, the debut of Glory first ever Chinese fighter a huge audience in that country expecting big things from Ching Hao Meng he will face Francis Killian Mullen who is also making his glory debut but up next his coach describes him as a rabid dog being held back well he's about to be unleashed the brawler Harut Gregorian looks to destroy glory debutante Pavel Garay who promises to match fire with fire.
For all things Glory, log on to glorykickboxing.com. You can also follow us on Facebook. Check out our YouTube channel. We're on Snapchat, Instagram. You can find us pretty much everywhere except for your bedroom. We'll leave you alone when you're in there. Our next super fight of the evening scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Glory Welterweight Division. First to make his way to the Glory Ring, this Slovakian boxer is also trained in Muay Thai and makes his Glory debut tonight. Make him feel welcome, Pavel Garay! Joe, I don't know about you, but if I'm making my glory debut, the one guy I do not want to fight is the guy Pavel Garay is fighting. Uh, Pavel Garay, it's a big opportunity for him, so it's hard to say no to a big opportunity like that. He does have enough experience to, to be in there with Haru, but you do not give an opportunity up to fight in the glory ring. So all Garay has to do is beat Haru Gregorian. <laughs> That's about as tough as it gets in all the glory. Good luck to him, though. His TKO win over Daniel Zalaja in Germany marked his 11th victory in his last 11 fights. Here is Harut Gregorian. He knocks out 75% of his opponents. And the ones that survive him, well, they live to tell the tale. This guy is brutal. His trainer, as I mentioned earlier, describes him as a dog that is rabid, even in training. No one wants to spar with this guy. They offer people double the money just to come spar with Harut, and most say thank you, but no thanks. Well, even his training partner, uh, Jamal Ben Sadiq, a 290-pound man, doesn't even want to fight with Harut. But let me tell you, when he gets on the inside, mixes up those power punches, he's very scary and very powerful. He's exciting to watch, and you're about to see what we're talking about. We've built him up enough. Hopefully he delivers. Harut Gregorian, Pavel Garay, here is the tail of the tape. Harut, 28 years old. Garay is 30. And it's Gregorian with a slight one-inch reach advantage. The biggest advantage here is the experience of Gregorian, who has 53 professional fights and a 74% knockout ratio. And 2-1 and in glory with only one loss in the glory ring. And that was to one of the top contenders, Johan Kongolo. This now scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Glory Welterweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, a WKN World Champion. His record, 14 wins with just eight losses. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters. He weighed in at 166 pounds, 75.4 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Poprad, Slovakia. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Pavel Gara. His opponent fights from the white corner, a world tournament champion trained in kickboxing and Muay Thai. His professional career record, 43 wins with 10 losses. 32 of those 43 wins have come by way of knockout. At 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters, he weighed in at 168 and one half pounds, 76.6 kilos. Fighting out of Armenia and currently ranked number five in the Glory World Rankings. Introducing Harut Gregorian. And your referee in charge of this bout is John Axwood. Pavel Garay said his game plan is just to make it to the third round because Gregorian, he feels, will gas okay, out. Okay, guys, I want a clean fight. So obey my rules. Stop is stop, break is break, okay? Check it out. How long is this going to last, Joe? Well, it all depends the strategy uh, for Garay. I think he needs to come out, really establish his distance, use his movement, and use a lot of good straight punches to try to keep Gregorian away from him. 
Harut Gregorian, 32 knockouts in his career. Pavel Garay has never knocked anyone out. Maybe tonight's the magic night. Gregorian in the white gloves. Garay in the black. That's what Gregorian wants. He's going to control that center of the ring, and he's going to try to keep Garay against the ropes so he can unload his power punches. And here are some power punches. Garay trying to throw one of his own. Garay needs to stay away from the corners because that's where Gregorian wants him. That's what he needs to do. Stay active with straight punches and, and keep moving. Gregorian was originally supposed to fight Kareem Ben Mansour, a top-ranked fighter in this division, but Ben Mansour had to drop out. Garay, a late replacement. Gregorian was hoping to face someone with a with a ranking, but he can't afford to take Garay lightly. He does have 120 amateur fights. Nice uppercut. What Gregorian does well is he really puts heavy punches on your guard and attacks the head, which forces his opponent to get his guard up really high, and that's when he rips that liver shot, and that's how we finish Salaha. If you're Garay, do you want to try and keep this in the middle of the ring? Yeah, he doesn't want to stay against the ropes. That's where Gregorian's doing it. That's what he's controlling the center of the ring, keeping Garay there. Good head kick there and a left hook from Gregorian. Garay's staying active. He's fighting backwards and staying active. Gregorian says people pay to see knockouts. That's what I give them. I don't want to win by points. There's that counter left hook. Gregorian keeps landing it. Garay even said in his pre-fight interview he's more of a points fighter. So you can tell here he's just staying active and moving. Where Gregorian's that power fighter that we're seeing. He likes to control and pressure. Joe mentioned it earlier. Gregorian does indeed spar with Jamal Bin Sadiq, who's 290 pounds. And they have at Hemmer's gym they have a lot of good sparring and a lot of good training partners. So it, it's a good advantage for them uh, when they come to the glory ring. Sadiq told us as well that Harut Gregorian was somehow a heavyweight. He'd destroy me. So that's the respect that Gregorian has among his training mates. And back in the corner is Garay. You don't want to be there. I always would like to see Gregorian use some of his low kicks a little bit more. And because he's an inside puncher with good hooks, the low kick flows really well off of it. Well, Garay went one round with Gregorian. And if his plan is truly to make it three rounds, he's off to a decent start. And that's one round longer than what we saw his last opponent do back at Glory 36 in Germany, Joe. Yeah, he always has that similar approach where he'll kind of use his defense until you're backed up against the ropes. And once he has you against the ropes, that's when he's going to start unloading those big power punches. And it was against Solaja where, he, again, he throws those hooks to the head and mixes in those body punches. And he was able to finish with that nice liver hook to the body. That improved to Root Gregorian to 43 and 10 overall. He's the fifth ranked lightweight in the world today. Well, talking to Nicky Hammers, his coach, he feels that Gregorian is one of the next top contenders in the welterweight division. So round two, it's scheduled to go three. Pavel Garay, a huge underdog in this fight, no doubt about it. But the longer this fight goes, the better for him. Well, maybe he's trying to weather the early storm and to see if some of that power can come out of uh, Gregorian's hands as the rounds progress. I did call this a lightweight division fight. It obviously is in the welterweight division, 170 pounds. And I tell you what, Harut does not look like he's getting gassed out at all. Still well, looks fresh as a daisy. He kind of is having a different approach this second round. You see that he's using more setup punches to land the power. He's not just going in there and, you know, wasting all his energy. So he's using a little bit more setup punches, being a little bit more active. And then when he has the opportunity, he's going to rip in his power shots. 
Is there a chance that Gregorian saying, listen, I, I could use the work a little bit. I don't need to put him away early. I don't mind playing with this guy a little while before I put him down. Well, he needs to set up his power, and a lot of guys are expecting him to, to come in oh. and be very aggressive. Look at that right hand that snuck in there for Harut Gregorian. This is where Gregorian can showcase some of his other weapons, like his knees and his kicks. And there was a kick that went low just as Gregorian was landing a left hook. That's one way to slow Harut down. Joe, you ever taken a shot like that? I've taken a few of them. <laughs> That's why fighters have steel cups usually. Well, Gregorian may mean more than steel right now. He's still bent over in pain. He has up to five minutes and may need to take a little more time. It looks like you got him pretty good. Okay. There's a shot right there. So let's see how Gregorian reacts. A lot of fighters end up coming out aggressive as after they get hit. They want to come back, but we'll see how Gregorian reacts from that. Oh, he's reacting violently. That's how he's reacting. And Garay about to go down. Stays on his feet, though. That's what he wanted to get back in there. It frustrates him, so he's coming back again like he did in the first round. And Garay falling backwards, sideways, but he's managed to stay upright. See, at least when Gregorian's, you know, putting his output like that, he's trying to stay defensive. He's not trying to punch with the punch. He's going to stay defensive, use his movement, and then try to attack. You don't really want to open up against combination fighters who are aggressive like that on the inside. Now Harut looks a little fatigued after throwing about 40 straight punches. There's a left hook that gets in there. So certainly a moral victory perhaps for Garay, who it seems is about to survive two rounds with Harut Gregorian. There's just not enough power in Garay's shots to, to slow Gregorian down, and Gregorian's not really worried about it. Well, Garay's strategy all along was to do his damage in round number three. He gets that right. chance next. As we look at our highlights from round two, we start with a low light, Joe. Yeah, that was the, the kick that hurt Gregorian. But then after that shot, it's when Gregorian got a little frustrated with that low blow and started putting on good pressure like he showed early in the first round. There was a, an attempt for a spinning back fist, and then he came around with his right hook as Garay backed up and created more distance. The Glory Girls are with us tonight, as they are every night. Make sure and check out their profiles on glorykickboxing.com. Right. Round three. Not many people expected it to go this far, including myself and Joseph Altolini. But Garay has proved us wrong. Let's see if he can do something now that he's finally here. Well, it's one thing to survive it, but if Garay really wants to take this fight, he has to kind of commit to a lot of his strikes and try to fight back a little bit more. I think it's easy to say, or safe to say, that Gregorian has clearly won rounds one and two. Yeah, it's that constant pressure and a lot of the damage shots. Everything he throws in these exchanges are doing damage. Good right hand from Garay. Maybe Garay saving up for that one big moment, that one big flurry towards the end of the round when Gregorian's as tired as he's going to be. And Joe, we saw Marat Gregorian get a title shot in December. How soon should Harut Gregorian get one? Well, he's been doing well, and I'd still like to see him fight some other top contenders in the division. But he's doing a good job, and he's on his way very soon. 
careful. But I'd still like to see him showcase some of his other weapons, like his, like his kicking. Um, he does have good knees, but he can't just rely solely on his punches all the time. Oh, and that right hand, well, maybe it didn't hurt him as bad as it initially looked, but Haru did back into the ropes. Break. Step back. So a minute 20 to go now for Pavel Grai to pull out a miracle. And believe us, or believe me, when I tell you Gregorian will not be happy with his performance unless he puts Garai away. And he's a knockout fighter, and he's never going to be happy unless he gets the knockout. So he's going to definitely be a little bit frustrated after this fight. Break! Step back. 50 seconds to go here. But it also is a good lesson for knockout fighters that sometimes, you know, they need to go those three rounds to to feel it out and to remind them that they need to put that extra work in the gym to make sure they're always able to go three rounds. Pavel Grai said his father got him into kickboxing as his biggest fan, but he can't talk to dad until after the fight because dad has too much information, too many things to tell him. So, you know, dad's watching now and he's proud of his son's performance here Great. against one of the best welterweights on the planet. There's a spinning back fist that Haru telegraph. There's Garai trying to be a little bit more active, but a little too All late. Right. Three rounds survived by Pavel Garai, and that's a victory in itself. Haru Gregorian will pick up his 44th win. Hopefully I'm not taking away all the drama, but the official decision when we return here to the Glory Super Fight Series. Still to come, it's a must win for both fighters. For Hesty Gerges, a chance to reestablish himself as a title contender. For Chai Lewis Perry, a chance to prove he belongs among the heavyweight elite. Decorated veteran heavyweight Hesdy Gerges travels to Belgium for a showdown with British motormouth chopper Chai Lewis Perry. Gerges is the former It Showtime heavyweight champion. He is famed for his savage low kicks and non-stop forward pressure. At 2 meters tall and weighing 110 kilos, Gerges brings a finishing rate of 47% to the ring. I come to fight, I always bring the fight, I never get back, I always go in front, I take two punches to give three, I take two kicks to give four. Just my style, just kickboxing style, and uh, then uh, I think it will be no problem for me to win. Lewis Perry, meantime, has won four of his last five fights in glory. But the hard-kicking Gerges represents the biggest name opponent and biggest challenge of his career thus far. To be completely honest with you, he has my respect. He's a big dude's heavyweight division. Anything can happen. I'm expecting him to come out strong in the first couple of minutes. Um, and then I'm expecting him to go to sleep the minute thereafter. We are back here on UFC Fight Pass for Glory Super Fight Series, and Harut Gregorian gave Pavel Garay all he could possibly take, but he took it. Well, I think he anticipated a first round knockout because he came out throwing all of his power shots, but in round two, he hit that low blow, and after he had that low blow, he came out like a savage, like he did in the first round. But a lot of his steam and power started to go as the fight progressed, but Garai just didn't have enough. He kept moving, trying to, to counter back, but there was not enough power to threat Gregorian with anything. Here are the final statistics. Statistics. Look at the punches thrown by Haru Gregorian. 212, and he landed over half of them. Yeah, he just constantly throws punches, and that's what I was, uh, I was saying earlier. I'd like to see him mixing his kicks and knees a little bit more, but look at the amount of shots he threw uh, to Garai's head. But shows how tough Garai is, and hopefully we get to see him back. It's the official decision. We'll hear it from Tim Hughes.
Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. All five of our ringside judges see them about the same and score at 30-27. A unanimous decision for your winner, Harut Gregorian! I told you he wouldn't be happy. No smile from Harut Gregorian, who spends a lot of time here in Belgium. He doesn't smile much in general, but not even a win after hard training could make him smile. Still to come, it is our heavyweight battle royal. Hesty Gurgis promises this will be an easy night of work, and there's no way it goes the distance. His opponent agrees, but Chopper Chai says it will be him getting the KO with one of his massive right hands. But coming up next, the glory debut of China's Ching Hao Moon. A lot is expected of the Chinese armed police sniper. He'll try to take down Belgium's own Killian Mulud. These two lightweights collide next. Record at least? I don't even have that. Saturday, April 29th, the world's finest fighters arrive in Denmark for one night of bone crunching kickboxing at Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen. With American rising star Richard Abraham battling British beast Jamie Bates. Deadly Danish lightweight Mohamed El Mir, plus action from lightweight fan favorite Josh Chauncey and heavyweight behemoth Freddy Camayo. Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, Saturday, April 29th. Don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, we next turn our attention to the Glory Lightweight Division and a piece of Glory history. This young French standout makes his Glory debut here in Brussels. Here comes Killian Moulin. You hear the lyrics, one shot, one opportunity. That's what Killian Mulun is getting. 12, 3 and 0 with three knockouts. He kind of looks like Eminem too, Joe. What else do we know about this guy? Well, he does have a big opportunity here to fight the first signed Chinese fighter, but he's a fighter that likes to mix up his strikes. You're going to see him with some good kicks on the outside, mixed with good boxing, and you might see a lot of spinning attacks. He likes spinning back kicks and spinning back fists, so he's got a big task in front of him against the experienced Chinese fighter. He will forever hold the distinction of being the first Chinese athlete to step through the glory ropes. Here is Ching Hao Meng. Glory is expanding around the world and no market is more important than China, and Ching Hao Meng has the distinct honor and pleasure, according to him, to represent his country here in glory. The yeah. first fighter ever. This is a big opportunity because not only is he showcasing in kickboxing, he does have good Chinese martial arts background with 10 years of training in Chinese Kung Fu, as well as Sanda, which is a Chinese form of kickboxing where they get to clinch and throws and sweeps. So I want to say hello to our Chinese audience watching Glory, perhaps for the first time. Thanks to our partners, Lei Sports TV. Glory can be seen exclusively in China on all platforms, including LaySports.com. Here is our tale of the tape. It's France versus China. 154 pounds, Meng just 25 years old. He is taller and he has a much longer reach. Yeah, there's a, there's that height and reach advantage for Meng, but both of these guys have, you know, similar professional experience, but it is Meng, who I just said earlier, has 10 years of Senda and Wushu experience, so that's got to play for him and an advantage uh, for him tonight. Both fighters obviously used to winning. 
We are once again scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the glory lightweight division. Fighting out of the black corner trained in kickboxing in Muay Thai. His professional record, 12 wins with three losses, three of those wins by knockout. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, 1.73 meters, and he weighed in at fight time at 147 and one half pounds, 67.1 kilos. Fighting tonight out of France, ladies and gentlemen, Killian Kiki Moule. Here now is his opponent, standing on the left and fighting out of the white corner, a Mushu Sanda champion. His record, 11 wins with just two losses, one of those wins by knockout. Standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at 149 and one half pounds, 67.7 kilos. He fights tonight out of the Jiangsu province of China. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the sniper, Ching Hao Mong. And your referee in charge of this bout is Paul Nichols. Okay, gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you want. Push back. Right back. Judge. 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 Time you push back. Back. Unless Paul Nichols Fight. speaks Chinese, I don't think Mong's going to be able to understand him. He does not speak English, that's for sure. So history being made now. Glory's first Chinese fighter on display here on Glory Super Fight Series. Even with his young kickboxing experience, he has fought some of the top names, and he even has a close fight against Sanchai, who is, again, one of the legends of Muay Thai. Ching Hao Mong is known as the sniper because he is a sniper. Joined the army at the age of 19. Neutral. He began a new military lifestyle, and this year marks the sixth year of his service with the armed police. Takes a lot of pride in that. Time in. Fight. So Mulun with a low blow right out of the gate. Oh, there's nice some, kick there. Some of that kung fu style that he's bringing in with that front side kick. And Mulun said his... The two men that kind of inspired him to take up martial arts, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Now he said in his pre-fighter bio, he said, don't let the looks fool you. He says he has the skill and the confidence to be the best fighters in the weight class. Well, this is his chance. Todd Grisham here alongside Joseph Valtellini. We'd also like to welcome our Chinese broadcast team as well, calling the fights right now. He Peng, Jing Zhao, and Wang Team. Welcome to glory, gentlemen. Enjoy the ride. Mung does need to be careful, though. Malou is coming in. Break! Break! Very explosive kicks on the outside. What do you make of that? Verb oh, he caught a right hand. That's what, that's that's what I was saying. Feet. He needs to be careful. He is coming in with his chin a little too high. Break. He is explosive on the outside, so I'd like to Break. see him stay a little bit more on the outside and use those kicks. We know how much pressure must be on him here tonight. Hundreds of thousands watching in his home country. The first Break. Chinese fighter in glory I'm history. A big, a big contingent of Chinese fans here to see him. To whom much is given, much is expected. Maloon does need to be a little bit more active. Let's see if he can get this fight in more punch range. Because that's the best shot he has. Trying to catch Mung as he comes in. Maloon obviously feeling little to no pressure. Yes, it is his glory debut, but no one expecting much from him here tonight. He is the underdog, no doubt about it. Fight! for Mung. So the first round of Mung's glory clear and Mulu's for that matter in the books. As for how 
Ching Hao Mung's first trip to Belgium win. Here's a look. Let's take a little bit uh, of a closer look at Meng, finding out if China, uh, known as the sniper, and as Todd said, uh, he's the member of the Beijing Arms Police, and he does have a good background in Chinese martial arts what? in Wusu and Sanda. Now, what exactly is Sanda? Well, Sanda is basically Muay Thai, but uh, in that clinch, you're allowed to do throws. You're allowed to do throws and sweeps and uh, throw your part, part, uh, your opponent down. So there's a little bit more grappling and clinching. That certainly is not allowed here in glory. We'll see how he makes the transition. Mung has taken some pretty big shots here. He is. He's landing well, and he's landing well with his kicks on the outside. He punches in twos. But Mulun's doing a good job at countering as, as Mung's coming in. Who did you give that first round to? Well, I'm giving that first round to Mung for that clean scoring strikes, and especially with those spectacular techniques. He's throwing side kicks, high kicks, hook kicks. He loves going to the head. Break. And here's our total strike so far. You can see pretty close. Mung's landed 18, Maloon 17. Well, you got to remember, it's uh, with Glory scoring, there's an emphasis on spectacular techniques, and that's what Mung's doing with his kicks on the outside. So a head kick is scored more than just a jab. And Maloon falling out of the ropes, a little bit off balance, not sure that it was a punch that sent him down there. Maloon is just waiting too long, waiting to counter too much. He needs to be a little bit more Fight. active, in my opinion. Fight. Mung grew up wanting to be a professional football player, and then at the age of 13 decided, you know what, I'm going to enter a martial arts academy and see how I do as a fighter. Well, he's done pretty well. Again, those hands are pretty low for Mung. He comes in and he lands two punches, and that's where Maloon's trying to capitalize on, on countering after those two punches of Mung. Maloon, a 12-3 record, fighting out of France. He's getting his shots in, that's for sure. He needs to keep that constant pressure. He needs to try to get Mung against the ropes, maybe hit some body punches, then mix in shots to the head. Right. Still to come tonight, our heavyweight co-main event. Hesty Gerges, Chai Lewis Perry. And then it's the main event, lightweight championship of the world, Sitichai versus Dylan Salvador. We're in round two of a scheduled three. Xing Hao Meng making his debut against Killian Mulu. I like when Meng throws those kicks on the outside. He doesn't need to come in and use his boxing. Let's see some of those wushu kicks and right. spectacular right. weapons on the outside. Right. That was a closer round than round one. What do you think? It was closer, and like I said, it's it's Mulun doing a good job at countering, but in order for him to be a little bit more successful and to, to dominate the round, he does need to be more active, and that's that counter right hand that keeps landing. Beautifully timed. There's Mung following with his counter left hook, which kind of off-balanced Maloon into the ropes. I don't have a problem with the word off-balanced. I like it. Makes sense to me. Yes, it is indeed. Round three here in Brussels, Belgium. The last time we were here, I believe, was Glory 2. Five years ago. Go. So three minutes left here for one of these men to make a statement. Ching Hao Mong, 11 and 2. Just one knockout. Fight! 
He'd love to get number two here. Three minutes to do it. Nice kick to the body by Maloon. Beautiful lead hook kick. There's Maloon trying to be a little bit more aggressive. Can't wait too long. Both men looking for that opening. We'll find it first. Mong has absorbed more strikes than Maloon. But again, if the judges are scoring on spectacular offense, it should be Mong's fight to lose. Maloon's best shot is that right hand. I'd like to see him set it up a little bit more. Maybe with a nice jab. Right, you do not strike. Fight! Long listed as a southpaw, but right now fighting out of a orthodox stance. Yeah, with his Chinese martial arts background, they learned to fight from both stances, so he can probably fight both ways. Hook connected. Right hand wasn't far off for Monk. Monk's relying more on his lead hook where Maloon's trying to land that right hand. Seems like Monk now is more interested in just throwing one punch instead of combinations. I'd still would like to see him keep a little bit more distance and throw his kicks. Right. But what he does is after he throws his punches, he close distance really quick to try to avoid the counter punching. Break. Break. We asked Ching Hao Moon how much he knew about his opponent, Tilly Balloon. He said absolutely nothing. I don't know how old he is. I don't know how tall he is. I don't know what he looks like. He just spent roughly nine minutes in a fight with the man and did pretty well. 20 seconds to go. I'm sure Maloon's corner would like to see him be a little bit more active, try and win this round three. Well, with 10 seconds left, he should have started putting a, more pressure early on. But Mung really tying him up in close range. So that will do it. Mung feels confident he did enough to get the win. Is he right? We shall find out when we return here on the Glory Super Fight Series. <laughs> Earlier tonight, Whitney Miller had a chance to speak to Chai Lewis Perry. Let's hear the other side of the story. Whitney now with Hesty Gerges. Hesty, you're about to take on Chopper Chai Lewis Perry tonight. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, I think it will be a hard fight. I always prepare for a hard fight, but uh, for sure I'm going to be the winner. Chai said that you're not taking him seriously, that you didn't train hard enough for this fight. Do you think that statement is at all true? We will see after a few hours, and we will, he will see how hard I've trained. I take every opponent serious. You take every opponent seriously. All right, well, we'll see it tonight. Good luck. Thank you very much. Hesty Gerges vowing that he's not overlooked Chai Lewis Perry, despite the fact that many feel he should or could. That's coming up later tonight. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this fight. And it was Mung really showcasing some fancy kicks on the outside, some good counter left hooks, and really made sure he closed distance early, but 
in the process of closing that distance. He did eat a lot of right hands from Maloon, who, in my opinion, could have been a little bit more active. And if you look at the scoring and, and the punches landed, they're very close in, in activity and power shots landed. But again, according to Glory scoring, it's that clean scoring strikes with spectacular techniques that gets the advantage. Sometimes statistics can tell the tale, sometimes they don't. You be the judge, as you can see, total thrown and landed close to identical, Chuck. Yeah, it's, it's a very tough fight to score, but it looked like Mung was a little bit more aggressive, pushing the action, pushing the pace, so you definitely got to take that into consideration when looking at the judges. The ring control belonged to Mung. What do the scorecards say? Here's Tim Hughes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. After three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals. One of our judges scores at 30-27, Mullen. Another judge, 30-27, Mung. Our final four judges, two times 29-28, two times 30-27. It is a split decision for your winner. Ching Hao Mong! There you have it. Mong with his split decision victory. Um, he's got to be very excited being the, not only the first Chinese fighter signed, but he gets his first win, and you sure China behind him is cheering and, and going nuts for him. As he goes forward here in glory, what's your one piece of advice that he needs to work on? Well, I'd like to see him keep distance a little bit more, showcase more combinations, but overall, great fight, and he's got to remember to keep those hands a little tighter and avoid those counter punches. Keep your hands up. We can all remember that one. Coming up next, former title challenger, Marat Gregorian looks to climb back to the top of the lightweight rankings with an impressive win over Bulgaria's Anton Petrov, who vows to shock the kickboxing world tonight in Belgium. Saturday, April 29th, the world's finest fighters arrive in Denmark for one night of bone-crunching kickboxing at Glory Superfight Series Copenhagen, with American rising star Richard Abraham battling British beast Jamie Bates, deadly Danish lightweight Mohamed Elmir, plus action from lightweight fan favorite Josh Johnson and heavyweight behemoth Freddie Camayo. Glory Superfight Series Copenhagen, Saturday, April 29th. Don't miss it. down and three to go we've already seen one Gregorian get a win that's Harut what do you expect to see for um, Marat no relation by the way well Marat is a very experienced glory fighter and he has fought the the, the division champion Sinichai uh, three times so he does have a lot of experience and he does want to climb his way back up to title contention Ladies and gentlemen, we once again turn to the lightweight ranks of glory and about schedule for three three-minute rounds. He comes to Belgium, winner of three of his last four fights. Please welcome Anton Petrov. Petrov knows what's in front of him tonight, told us yesterday, listen, Gregorian does everything well. I have got to be at my best to win this fight. What is his best? What does he need to do, Joe? Well, I'd like to see Petrov keep his distance a little bit more because Gregorian is, is a good pressure fighter uh, that likes to throw combinations. So I'd like to see Petrov keep his distance, use some straight punches to keep Gregorian away from him, and don't really let 
Grigori dictate the pace because that's his biggest advantage. This man fought for the belt of glory 36 in Germany and looks to get back into title contention. Here comes Marat Gregorian. Marat Gregorian fighting out of Belgium brings in a 60% knockout ratio, ratio, and he feels he's going to up that number a little bit tonight. He says, Petrov is not as powerful as me. I'm not scared to get in there and let my hands go. Yeah, he's an aggressive fighter, and it's very hard to fight that. He's someone that's constantly in your face, constantly throwing combination. If you're going to hit Gregorian, he's going to counter back and try to hit you with more punches and more combinations. Gregorian said he didn't study too much tape, but from what he saw, he was not that impressed. He said, I'll learn more about him as the fight goes on. I just want to be sharp. I want to look good. Well, he's fought the best in the world, so hopefully he took Petrov very seriously after his last uh, title loss with Sidichai. Here is our tail of the tape, 154 pounds. They are lightweight. It's Belgium versus Bulgaria, both men 25 years old, both men with identical reach, 71.5 inches. Yeah, the Petrov was saying he doesn't cut too much weight, so there's a slight weight advantage for Gregorian, but it's that high level of professional experience for Gregorian that gives him the biggest advantage. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this battle of the lightweights is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. This battle-tested athlete from Hong Kong to Bangkok brings a young career record of 10 wins with just six losses. Three of those wins coming by way of knockout. At 5 feet 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at 150 and one half pounds, 68.3 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Bulgaria, here is Anton Petrov. His opponent fights from the white corner and debuted here in Belgium in glory two almost five years ago. Since then, his professional career record, 48 wins with 10 losses, two bounce scored even, and 29 big career knockouts. At 5 feet 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at 153 and one half pounds, 69.8 kilos. Fighting out of Belgium and currently ranked number two in the Glory World Rankings. Introducing Marat Grigorian. Once again, your referee is Paul Nichols. Okay, gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves if you want. Break. Judge. 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 Timekeeper. Fight! You can see the ovation and hear it from this crowd here for Belgium's own Marat Gregorian, who Joe has fought almost every big name in this division. Robin Van Roosmalen, Serhei Adamchuk. Mohamed Elmir and Sidichai twice. Yeah, he's very experienced fighting all across the world. So this is a huge opportunity for Petrov to not only showcase and get a great glory debut, but to catapult him as a, a big name in the lightweight division. He didn't look intimidated during that, that stare down. He didn't sound intimidated when we spoke to him at length yesterday. He did say this is the biggest opportunity of his life, and he promises not to let his fans down. He does come from a solid team, Petrov, where he's from the same team as Nicholas Larson, who um, came back from a, a long layoff and showed a great performance in his last fight. Snapping head kick there for Petrov, but it was partially blocked by Gregorian. What? According to the bookmakers, what? Gregorian listed as nearly a 4-1 to one favorite over Anton Petrov. There's that combination fighting of Gregorian, and he does a great job at controlling the center of the ring. He's going to keep Petrov against the ropes and mix in a lot of combinations. A couple of good low kicks from Gregorian. Petrov answers back with one. 
Petrov is doing a good job at staying really tight and defensive while Gregorian is throwing his combinations, but he's going to have to be a little bit more active, and he just got rocked. Petrov off balance now, trying to find his focus again. Hard to do with Gregorian all up in your grip. Ooh, that uppercut was nasty. Another low kick. Gregorian staying really calm, really mixing in his punches. That's what he needs to do. He's mixing up that power, slipping in that lead uppercut. But Petrov's throwing some good counter punches. And Petrov has not fought in nearly a year. April 2016, the last time he stepped in the ring. So if he has any ring rust, he better get rid of it quick. Those low kicks from Gregorian are going to add up. A knee from Petrov, blocked. Gregorian just does not take a step back, does he? No, he stays in pressures, but he's putting good focus on that low kick. He's not overthrowing his punches. He's going to mix in the power of his punches. A solid first round for the Belgian Gregorian. Anton Petrov with some work to do. Let's get to know a little bit more about our two combatants in this fight. And we'll start with Marat Gregorian, Joe. And his fighting style, like you seen in that first round, he's very aggressive. Uh, and he constantly comes forward and he's had some good wins as one of those highlight knockouts that will probably be shown over and over again was his glory third out knockout over Jimé. But every time he gets to the top and has a chance for the world title, he just seems to come up short against Sinichai. I said it earlier, he can beat everybody in the world except for Sinichai. So he's hoping that Dylan Salvador beats Sinichai later tonight so he can get a crack at the Frenchman. What about Anton Petrov? Well, Petrov's, one of his favorite moves is that straight left cross, which we really haven't seen too much. And again, he comes from the same camp as uh, lightweight contender Nicholas Larson. Two, Gregorian in the white gloves, Petrov in the black. I like what Petrov did there. He's not going to constantly move back. He just started mixing in some angles with his footwork. And he's a lot more active with his combinations. But he's got to get out of those corners. Starting to recognize the low kicks, and that's that angling. And he threw a nice low kick off that angle. So the Coliseum Training Center in Holland, they're going to go 2-0. and Harut Gregorian winning Fight. earlier. Marat Gregorian in competition now. And then later tonight, Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. Well, both of those guys are actually from Hemmer's Gym. Excuse me, Hemmer's Gym, yes. Which again, also has a lot of tough fighters in, uh, in all weight classes. Nick Hemmer's the lead trainer there. You can see him in the corner now for Marat Gregorian. Break, break, break. The Coliseum Gym Fight. was in the corner of... This Toddy earlier tonight, our opening contest, a spectacular knockout win for him. He improves to 3-0 in glory. And there's a knockdown for Gregorian, a left hand. Two, three, four, that is set up from those four, low kicks. Five, six, seven, eight. Gloves up, gloves up. Fight. You're right, Joe, you can tell by the way he's walking Petrov. Limping a little bit, trying to get some feeling back in those legs. Another low kick. Why those low kicks are effective is Gregorian's using the high shin, where he can get oh, a good body break. shot. And he's turned his back on his opponent. That was a low kick that stopped Four, him there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it's over. Gregorian with the knockout victory as Petrov chooses not to continue. And this makes me extra happy because I was known for my low kick, so when I see fighters using it effectively, um, I get really excited. But good job at Gregorian at using his punches to set up those beautiful low kicks. 
Blood dripping from the nose now of Petrov as his corner is trying to ask him what's wrong. Let's see what's wrong. Well, Kokorian did a good job at controlling the center of the ring, really used his boxing, but Petrov did a good job at staying defensive and blocking his head, but that's the beauty of the low kick. As fighters are defending their head, it opens up the legs for nice low kicks. It looked like that low kick landed right on the front of his thigh, and Petrov's natural reaction was to say, please don't do that anymore. Stop right there. Please don't. We will make it official as Barack Gregorian improves to 49, 10, and 2. Saturday, April 29th, the world's finest fighters arrive in Denmark for one night of bone-crunching kickboxing at Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, with American rising star Richard Abraham battling British beast Jamie Bates, deadly Danish lightweight Mohamed El Mir, plus action from lightweight fan favorite Josh Johnsey and heavyweight behemoth Freddy Camayo. Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, Saturday, April 29th. Don't miss it. We welcome you back to Brussels, where a Belgian just picked up an impressive win, that being Marat Gregorian. Let's make it official here with Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end with an official time of one minute, 45 seconds of that second round. Ends by technical knockout for your winner, Marat Grigorian. Knockout number 30 for Marat Grigorian. He said he had about 100 friends and family here in attendance. You can hear them singing and chanting right now as the native son picks up a well-earned victory. Yeah, and he wants to get back to title contention, and this was a good start. But he does need uh, those higher profile fights to kind of pull him up the rankings. But good job at Gregorian at using those low kicks and showing how talented he is. We've decided apparently that the heavyweights are going to be last. They're not going to be next. So instead, how about a world title fight to hold you over? And it comes to you from the lightweight division. Saturday, April 29th, the world's finest fighters arrive in Denmark for one night of bone-crunching kickboxing at Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, with American rising star Richard Abraham battling British beast Jamie Bates, deadly Danish lightweight Mohamed El Mir, plus action from lightweight fan favorite Josh Johnsey and heavyweight behemoth Freddy Camayo. Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, Saturday, April 29th. Don't miss it.
has worked harder than Sidichai. He won two Glory Contenders tournaments and then captured the title. Sidichai is just such a veteran. 140 total fights, and he's only 25. Here comes Dylan Salvador. He holds a win over Sidichai. Glory Lightweight Contender Tournament Champion. What a story came in as the dark horse. We will see what 23-year-old Dylan Salvador does against the champion, Sinichok. We welcome you back here to the Vorst Arena in Brussels as we get set for our world title fight. Sinichai defending his title for the second time. Here's the current lightweight rankings. You can see Dylan Salvador is number two. He was number one when the night began, but after that victory that you just saw by Marat Gregorian, he jumps up to number one. Two styles, both based in Muay Thai. Who do you give the edge to? Well, it's, it's a close fight, and these guys are one and one in this fight. Um, in the first fight, it was Sidichai really dominating and really being more active, but that second fight, uh, we saw a good Salvador come out, uh, use good knees and good combinations, so I'm excited to see this third and final fight. And Salvador, very obviously uh, confident after winning the second fight. This will be their third fight. But Sinichai said, listen, I wasn't 100% for that second fight. In fact, afterwards, I had to stay in bed for three days with a high fever. So Sinichai has an excuse for that loss. He says he has no excuses tonight. Both men coming in at 100%. Yeah, but what makes this fight is so intricate is they're both very experienced Muay Thai fighters, and they're both self-paws. And that takes away that self-paw advantage that Sinichai has so much success with, and it takes away that left power kick that he's known for. Now this fight will be going five rounds. It's a world title fight. Those extra two rounds, who do you get the edge for, or edge to, with that being the case? Well, both guys are Muay Thai fighters, and they're used to five-round fights, so I don't really see an advantage for either guys. And Salvador said it's he prefers the five rounds over three. And as you can see, look at the fighting experience. 61 fights for Dylan Salvador, but that's nothing compared to the 148 for Sinichai. And both these men are in their mid-20s, Joe. That's outrageous. Yeah, and it's crazy because both of these guys are so technical, and it's going to bring in a great fight. And we saw with Salvador that he's got great boxing. So I think he might have the advantage in boxing, where Sinichai's kicks could be the biggest advantage for him. So it will be the World Lightweight Championship on the line. Sinichai versus Dylan Salvador. Joe, I got to put you on the spot. Who wins this fight? Whew, that is putting me on the spot, but I'm going to give the advantage to Sinichai just having more experience in the glory ring and being that champion for uh, quite a while now. This will be the second title defense for Sinichai. He takes on Dylan Salvador, and that fight starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the Glory Lightweight Championship of the World. Two wins in one night last December in Germany locked his date with kickboxing destiny. Here is Dylan Salvador. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Dylan Salvador. He looked very impressive back in December, winning two fights in one night. It was a lightweight contender tournament. That's how he earned this title shot. We mentioned it a while ago. This is the third time these men have fought Sinichai, winning their first fight. Dylan Salvador winning the second, and he, he claims or considers that May 2015 win over Sinichai the best victory in his professional career. Well, to beat Sinichai is a huge advantage, so he does have confidence coming in here, and after watching his fights, I would like to see Salvador be more active, keep countering back, and try to get that fight in punch and boxing range.
He successfully defended the belt at Glory 36 and enters the Glory Ring on a four-fight win streak. City Chai, Sit Song Pinong. He is known as the killer kid, but believe it or not, he says he doesn't like violence, doesn't like hurting people, but he has to do it. He's trying to feed his family, and recently he was able to buy his parents a house, bought them some land, that it was one of the best moments, the best feelings of his life, being able to support his family. Yeah, this isn't just a sport for Sinichai. This is his life, and he's been fighting from the age of 11. So uh, he does have a lot of experience, and he has to do a good job. And even behind us, he only has one loss uh, in his glory career, and that's to Robin Van Roosmalen, who's currently sitting right behind us. So he does have a lot of experience in the glory ring. So it's exciting to see how he adapts from the second fight and if he can continue to be active even though that Salvador is a southpaw as well. And there's Robin Van Roos smiling. I don't know if he's ever smiled before in his life and I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with him sitting so close to his jump. He's able to go crazy at any second. He's the pit bull and he will fight the winner of this match. Sinichai versus Dylan Salvador. Both men in their 20s. Dylan just 23, Joe. Yeah, and the biggest advantage in this fight is that fight experience for Sinichai. But what's very impressive is with both have Muay Thai backgrounds, and you can see the punch, knee, and kick percentages very similar across all three of those weapons. We expect that the judges are going to have their hands full in this one. It goes five rounds, three minutes for each round. Punches, kicks, and knees are the legal strikes. Three knockdowns in a round, as we saw earlier tonight, or four in the fight and it will be stopped. Well, let's take a look at the scoring system. Tonight, five judges will be scoring the belt using the 10-point must system. Scoring is based on knockdowns, damage, clean scoring strikes with an emphasis on spectacular techniques. Finally, if there's no advantage, judges are looking at aggressiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are scheduled for five rounds for the glory lightweight championship of the world. With over 200 combined professional fights, these two last met in Italy in 2015. But tonight, the glory belt is on the line. This bout sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association in cooperation with the BKBMO. At the opening bell, your referee is John Axwood. From Brussels to Boston, glory kickboxing fans are watching around the world. It's time for glory! Let's meet the challenger. He is a contender tournament champion and a 2014 WAKO World Muay Thai champion. His professional record, 49 wins with 11 losses, one bout scored even with 21 career knockouts. At 5 feet 9 and 1 half inch, 1.76 meters. He went in at fight time at 153 and 1 half pounds, 69.7 kilos. Fighting tonight out of France, he is the number one lightweight contender in the world. Here is Dylan Salvador. His opponent is a two-time contender champion and Thailand national champion. His professional record impressive, 113 wins with 30 losses, five bouts scored even, and 30 career knockouts. At five feet eight and one half inch, 1.74 meters, he weighed in at 152 pounds, 69 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Bangkok, Thailand, he is the reigning and defending glory lightweight champion of the world. Here is the killer kid, Sinichai. Once again, your referee in charge of this bout, John Axwood. Okay, fighters, I want a clean fight, so obey my commands. 
Break is break, stop is stop. You take two steps back, then you can continue the fight. Yes? Questions? Take gloves. Their trilogy ends tonight with the highest stakes possible. The lightweight championship of the world. Sinichai in the white gloves, Salvador in the black. Yeah, this is going to be a very technical fight. Both guys with a lot of experience, and even Salvador may have uh, not as much experience as Sidichai, but he has fought some of the biggest names in, in Muay Thai. If this fight goes anything like their first two, it will go the distance, and it will be extremely close, Joe. Yeah, it's going to be about activity, and I think whoever could stay the most active is going to win the fight. Both of these guys... You know, can wait with a slower pace with the Muay Thai background. But Salvador was most successful in his second fight when he was countering back with a lot of combinations. If we do see a knockout in this fight, who's most likely to get it? That's a tough one to call. Um, I think it would be Sinichai really using his kicks to get it. Well, Salvador, I feel, has the advantage in the boxing. So I'd like to see him get on the inside and, and box a little bit. You saw a little trash talk type of nod from Salvador to Sinichai. Now he's smiling, having fun in there. Why not? You're fighting for a world title. Salvador's favorite weapon is that low kick, and it seemed to have worked in their previous fights where Sinichai has those powerful kicks that's easy to shut down Salvador's output. You mentioned that Sinichai... Or maybe we haven't mentioned that Sidichai is a part of the Thailand military. Part of the Royal Thai Army boxing team, in fact. And it was interesting to learn this week that in Thailand, each male, when they turn, I believe, 18 years old, walks into an army office and pulls out either a red or black card out of a hat. If it's red, you go into the army. If it's black, you're out. Sidichai told us, though, he with a preemptive move, went and volunteered to be in the Army as a Thai fighter. They put on Thai fights in front of the troops, so that's what Sidichai does when he's back home. And those are more boxing fights, so it's kind of good for Sidichai to help him adapt to the glory rules by working on his boxing. And that's what his camp was saying. In order for Sidichai to keep progressing and keep transitioning to kickboxing, he needs to work on that boxing. Looks like Salvador may have a slight cut under his right eye. Overcommitted with that move and got caught. Break. Step back. Another technical round, but they are letting their hands go. Joe, a lot of activity from both fighters. Salvador comes in, gets caught with a left. And then lands a few shots there at the bell. A very spirited round one for the world title. That's why I say it's going to be a very technical fight because both guys aren't, uh, well, won't allow the other person gain momentum with activity. So as soon as one person throws, the other's constantly countering back. And according to fight metrics, it's Sinichai that does have the slight advantage in power shots and activity. But close, very close first round. There's Sidichai landing his good punches, but it's Salvador that's initiating and really wanting to counter back. And again, that's what made him successful in his second fight win, was constantly countering back with combinations and using that left low kick. I mentioned Van Roosmalen. Ruben Van Roosmalen sitting behind me. He is a weight class lower, but used to fight in this division. And Dylan Salvador said, listen, if I win this fight, I want to go down a division and fight Van Roosmalen. That would be an awesome fight. Both very good technical, but again, that power that Van Roosmalen is Great. showing has been very scary. Especially as a featherweight. 
So round two, it's a title fight, so we're scheduled for five. A close round one. Joe, did you give the edge to either fight? Well, that's very tough to call because they're both very really similar active. I can't really see who did more damage. But you can see, they basically go one for one. Break. Step back. There are the total strikes so far, and it is close. This is one of those fights that I can guarantee you at the end of the five rounds, we're not going to have a clue who has the advantage. Both men will be extremely sore, I can promise you that. Some massive low kicks landing for each fighter and punches as well. That's that low kick of Salvador that does really well. And you got to remember, Sinichai is not used to someone hitting the outside of his lead leg. So this is why that self-paw advantage for Sinichai is no longer here. And that's why it's... Salvador does a good job at landing that low kick. Both men content to stand right in the middle of the ring and test their skills. Silva Salvador walked into that knee. Didn't slow him down, though. Sinichai has very good knees, and he has some good stoppage knees, and one of his best was against David Kyriak, Glory 22 France. As Salvador was going down, tried to look like an overhead kick almost. That would have been spectacular. Another razor-close round between these two. I feel this is a better round for Sinichai. And Sinichai's first title defense, he won by split decision over Murat Gregorian. Looks to be another close fight here tonight in Brussels. Left hand landed nicely for Sinichai. He's done well at catching Dylan Salvador as he comes in, Joe. And the two exchange glances as they make their way to the corner. Starting to get heated up in there. Let's look back at your keys to victory, Joe. How are they standing up through two rounds so far? Well, it's Sinichai that really needs to make sure he stays active on the outside, especially with his kicks. And when he's on the inside, he really needs to look to land those knees. And this is his first time in glory fighting that southpaw, and he has eaten a lot of low kicks, so he needs to make sure he blocks those low kicks of Salvador. Where Salvador needs to be first and be more active and keep countering, and that's when he's been most successful, is don't let Sinichai establish his momentum. Keep using those low kicks and keep getting the fight into punching range and finish with that low kick. He has tried to be first, he has tried to be more aggressive, but sometimes that aggression has cost him as Sinichai has caught him with either a knee or a right hand on the way in. Well, it seems to be Sinichai having the advantage in the boxing, which was surprising because after seeing Salvador's performance uh, in the Contenders Tournament, he showed amazing boxing, but it's Salvador with the advantage in the kicks and Sinichai with punching and boxing advantage. Dirty boxing taking place inside right now for these two. This has been a very good fight. No exchange punches, no exchange low kicks. It's the old anything you can do, I can do better routine. Both of these guys make sure they give uh, something right back. They don't just take a punch and not give one back. So they constantly go back and forth. There goes Salvador back to the low kicks, and that's what I said in my keys to victory. Sinichai's knees on the inside are very dangerous. The last three fights for Sinichai, a title defense, win over Marat Gregorian. He won the title from Ruben Van Roosmalen, and he earned a right to fight for the title with a win over Marat Gregorian again. Sinichai does not get an easy fight anymore. They're all tough, including this one against Salvador. Well, his glory experience has been contender tournaments and world title fights, and that's all he's really had. 
And we're here in Brussels. And of course, when you think of muscles in Brussels, you think of Jean-Claude Van Damme, and that's who Salvador said inspired him to be a kickboxer. Well, it inspired most people, and that's what got me into martial arts. John Claude John Van Damme was your guy, huh? The movie Kickboxer and Bloodsport. Step back. A minute to go here in round three. Dylan Salvador in black gloves, Sinichai in white. If you're just joining us, it's the second title defense for Sinichai. Salvador earning this title opportunity by winning a four-man contender tournament back in December. Won two fights and one night. Very quick run to the title, winning your glory debut as a tournament and then second time in glory fighting for a world title. And remember, Salvador just 23 years old, and yet... What experience he has, 61 professional wins. Number 62 would by far be his biggest. He's doing pretty well so far, but we said earlier we thought it would be a tough decision for the judges. It has been extremely close. Like I said, they keep going one for one, but it's Sinichai doing a good job with his boxing and knees. Salvador needs to keep up with his low kicks. Both men feeling like they they won the round. Let's take a look at these highlights. Both guys exchanging one for one, one for one. Oh, there's the both exchange <laughs> jabs and then both exchange right hands. You got that? It's like a mirror fighting a mirror. There's the kick reply. But Seuss in the corner are working on the legs of Sinichai. Well, I still feel if I had to give my unofficial scorecard, I'm giving a slight advantage to Sinichai. If I had to say it would be two rounds to one for Sinichai. I think Salvador did a great job in that first round with his low kicks, doing the most damage, where now Sinichai is starting to do more damage with his boxing and knees. Sinichai was on the stool getting a massage. Salvador stood up the whole time. What do you recommend to your fighters that you train now? Do you want him to sit or stay in between? Well, I've always been a guy that stood in the corner. Uh, you don't want the blood and the swelling to pull to your feet. So I like my guys to stand up in the corner. And it shows dominance that you don't need to sit down between rounds. We are entering the championship rounds, four and five here on our Glory Super Fight Series main event. But still to come tonight, a little twist of fate. It'll be Chopper Chai Lewis Perry and Hesty Gurgis in a heavyweight contest. Nice exchange there, and Salvador seemed to get the best of that one. Yeah, this, they keep going back and forth. But it's Salvador that really needs to be first and establish his momentum. Can't let Sinichai keep throwing his kicks in his knees. Strikes landed. Right. Look how close it is. And remember, this is just one guy hitting the button. So his guess is as good as yours. It's basically even Steven into round four. Joe has it two rounds to one. Let us know what you think. Reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Instagram, we're everywhere. Glory kickboxing. Sounds like Salvador's corner time to go for the low kick. Every time he lands it, you hear the his corner scream the away. And Muay Thai kicks are scored better than punches. In glory kickboxing, that's not the case. No, you're looking for clean scoring strikes, damage, knockdowns, and that's why the glory scoring is made for action and knockouts. That's why it's one of the most exciting sports on the planet. Both these men in fantastic physical condition. They look like they're in round one, but they're in round four. That's the Muay Thai experience on both of these guys. Both used to fighting five rounds, but with glory kickboxing, you tend to bring a faster pace. There's not enough clinch time. You need to constantly have action. Salvador looks like he's fading. It's been a frantic pace from the opening bell. 
Round four here, just one more round to go. Lightweight championship of the world on the line. So you see Salvador backing up now. He's waiting against the ropes, not countering as much. So it looks like Sinichai has the advantage in the fourth and fifth round. Nice low kick there from Sinichai. This is what you don't want, and that was my key to victory. And perhaps a low blow here. I think it was a knee to the body. He's calling it a knockdown. Three, four. It was a knee to the body. Six, seven, eight, nine. Hands up. He spit his mouthpiece out. Dylan Salvador quits. It's over. That's what I said. Sinichai's key to victory was those knees on the inside. Beautifully done. And now his second knockdown and TKO with knees. Good job, Sinichai. Salvador was doing so well. Was going tit for tat. And then all of a sudden, a knee, and that is it. Let's see how it went down. There it is, Joe. Right on the solar plex there. And it looked like he caught one in the liver first, and then it was to the solar plexus. There's the one that dropped him. Once you hit that button, it doesn't take too much. So it was perfectly timed. Could have been as Salvador was taking a breath, but he wasn't very happy with his performance. He spit out his mouth guard, and now he just walked out and ran out of the ring. Sinichai with his 31st win by knockout. It came quickly and violently. We'll make it official when we return. Saturday, April 29th, the world's finest fighters arrive in Denmark for one night of bone-crunching kickboxing at Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen. With American rising star Richard Abraham battling British beast Jamie Bates. Deadly Danish lightweight Mohamed Elmir, plus action from lightweight fan favorite Josh Chauncey and heavyweight behemoth Freddy Camayo. Glory Super Fight Series Copenhagen, Saturday, April 29th. Don't miss it. We're back here in Brussels, Belgium, and the feather, the lightweight champion of the world will remain the same, Joe. Sinichai with a quick knee to the solar plexus, and that was it for Dylan Salvador. Yeah, there was a lot of one-for-one -one exchanges, and Salvador was doing a, a great job at first, uh, but it was Sinichai started to, in my opinion, started to pick up in the second round. He started doing a better job at landing his punches on the inside, started mixing in some knees and the third round he continued how he left off but Salvador kept coming back and doing a great job at, at countering everything that Sinichai had but in the fourth round you see Salvador fatigue a little bit more he wasn't counting as much until that finish where Sinichai got that beautifully timed knee here are the final punch and kick statistics the strike count it was Sinichai dominating with punches but with knees the edge went to Dylan Salvador ironically though one of those knees by Sinichai did the trick yeah you can see from that scoring Salvador was doing such a great job but Sinichai was able to maintain that pace maintain that power and solidify the win with that TKO knee and Sinichai did a good job he showed great boxing and that's just showing that Sinichai is evolving as a, a kickboxer, and he's no longer just a Muay Thai fighter. He's able to use that Muay Thai base with some kickboxing style in boxing. Here's Tim Hughes now with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end with an official time of 2 minutes and 58 seconds of that fourth round, with the challenger unable to continue. Your winner, by technical knockout, and still the glory lightweight champion of the world, City Chai Sitsong Along with our head of talent operation,
Operations Corps Hammers, our Chief Executive Officer, Sean Franklin, joined by the Chief Operating Officer of Grunt Style, Tim Jensen. City Chai, congratulations. The rubber match has been settled. Did Dylan surprise you at all tonight? เขายินดีมากนะครับเราเอ่อทีมเราเสมอมาเอ่อเอ่อทรัคโคลคังเนี่ยคือวันวันนี้เป็นวันตัดสินอ่ะวันนี้เดลามีรายที่ที่เราท
Coming up later tonight on Glory, we've got a featherweight contender tournament. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's a good tournament. Uh, I don't can pick a winner right now, but I think uh, Adam Tuke got a little edge because he's the most experienced in, uh, in Glory. So, um, Other than Adam Chuk, who do you give uh, an advantage for in this tournament? Uh, I think the vi final is going to be the, I don't know his name, the Thai guy against the Adam Chuk. I think it's going to be the final. I agree. I think those two are the biggest favorites. And give me your thoughts on that fight you just saw. Seeming you fought Sidichai twice, and I think fans would love to see a third fight between that. What are your thoughts on ever moving up to the lightweight division again? Uh, yes, I, w I want the rubber match against Sidichai, like I told you before. I want to be the two division champ at the same time. So. Uh, yes, I would love that fight. This fight against uh, Salvatore was a great fight. It was really competitive. Uh, I think every round was really close, but uh, in, the, in the round that ended, I think he got a good knee and he couldn't recover from that. And uh, Cedis, I finished it good. You looked fantastic at, at a, a featherweight in the featherweight division, but you just had an MMA fight a few weeks ago. You won that fight. Describe what that was like for you. Uh, yeah, that, it was great. It was great to do something else, but also almost the same. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I like MMA too. I like fighting, so why not? So I think uh, something new. I got uh, motivated again, so it was good. You just want to beat people up. You don't care how you do it, right? No, if they call me for boxing, I'll box next week too, so I don't care. Boxing, MMA, and most importantly, glory kickboxing. Robin Van Roosman, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. So there you have it. He is Ruben Van Roosman and the name they were both trying to pronounce. But Joe, you shouldn't have bailed out. Hetch Panamarung from Thailand is in that tournament. So you and Van Roosman expect Hetch Panamarung to be squaring off against Serhei Adamchuk. Well, there is Hesty Gerges, obviously a very disappointed fighter. He wanted to fight Chai Lewis Perry, said he put in all the work in the gym, Joe. But unfortunately, Chopper Chai unable to fight tonight with an illness. Well, it's very disappointing. There was a lot of buildup to this fight. Um, and it was a big thing uh, for the heavyweight division because Gerges wants to get back on the winning streaks. And Chai Lewis Perry really wants to solidify himself as one of the elite in the heavyweight division. So one fight we did not see in the heavyweight division, but of the fights that did happen tonight, who impressed you the most? Well, I'm still excited to see that growth of Vestati, man. He's young, he's tall, and he's got a bright future ahead of him, so uh, excited to see more from him. And he's undefeated here in Glory Kickboxing. Well, for the entire Glory crew, including Whitney Miller and Joseph Maltolini, Bazooka Joe, I'm Todd Grisham. We'll see you next month in Copenhagen.